Vishishta Veda Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta. So there's various schools of thought, and I'll explain what they are. <coughs> Dvaita Vedanta. Dvaita means duality, where I am separate and the Lord is separate. And the main proponent of Dvaita Vedanta, to my knowledge, is Madhavacharya. He is the main teacher or champion of Dvaita Vedanta. Again, I am separate, the Lord is separate, that separation remains forever. That is true, that is real. Then there's Vishishta Advaita Vedanta, Vishishta Advaita Vedanta, which is that I am part and the Lord is full. And the main teacher of that is Ramanujacharya. Again, I am a part, <coughs> this is the Lord is a whole. Like a drop of water in the ocean, a part whole relationship. Then there is Advaita Vedanta, and that is based on Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya. And that is, there is only one. There is one and one alone. So these schools of thoughts are based on the identification with the Lord, the relationship with the Lord. If me and the Lord are separate, I'm a Dvaiti. If I'm a part of the Lord, then I'm a Vishishta Dvaiti. If I am the Lord, then I'm an Advaiti. So this is all based on identification. Now, if we look at the scope, the spectrum, it's an evolution of thought. I start off as a child, as a Bhagavad student, and they say, pray to Lord Shiva. Right? So the child is different, Lord Shiva is different. That's our typical foundation for spirituality. But as we try to understand Lord Shiva more, we see a lot of qualities of Lord Shiva and us are the same. So we start to realize, hey, there must be some connection between me and Lord Shiva. I'm just using Lord Shiva as an example. And that means I am a part in Lord Shiva as the whole. And as I think about it more, when I understand that what is exclusive of infinity? Nothing. That includes me. That includes you and you and all of us. If we truly understand that idea of infinite, infinitude, of infinity, what can be separate from it? And so all that remains is what? That's it. And that's why when I told that story of Brahman Maharishi, when they went to him and said, what are you doing for the freedom fight? His vision is of oneness. Nobody's fighting. No one's being freed. No one's enslaved. No one's dying. No one's being born. Doesn't science say the same? That energy is neither created nor destroyed. It only changes shape or form. This is what we've been talking about the last three discourses. Names and forms come and go, but the essence is always there. When you take this 170 pounds and it dies, this 170 pounds doesn't disappear. Some of it goes into energy that's just you can't see, some of it turns into earth, the water goes back to where the water is. That 170 pounds remains. When that sun gets, it's the sun is sh shrinking, it doesn't mean that that's just disappearing, that energy is being transferred throughout the solar system. That energy is stable. There's an equilibrium there. Same goes when Ram Ram Rishi opens his eyes and he, they're asking him this question. Who's coming? Who's going? There's just being. There's just oneness. There's just Advaita. It is such a liberating thought. It is such a logical thought too. This idea of Advaita. 